Welcome back to our second video here in this journaling video series. And now we are talking about journaling for intermediate traders. And who is this for? I would say this is for traders who have less than 12 months experience or traders who still feel a little bit emotional about their trading or traders who are giving back profits in their trading and also traders with confidence issues, which is often related to the prior. And the goal of this lesson and of this step is that you're going to improve your in-trade decisions. So what are you going to do when you're in a trade? Because that's often where traders lack the plan. They spend a lot of time looking at how to take better entries, but then once they're in a trade, they feel a little bit lost. Also, we want to remove outliers in our trading that are costing us a lot of money. We want to generally keep improving our trade quality and we want to integrate now a trading plan routine. So in Edgewonk, what we're going to do is that we're going to add two new inputs, the OTP and also stops and take profits if you haven't already added that. And then what we're going to focus on today is the trade management in Edgewonk, trading plans, and I will show you how to find outliers. So first of all, when you open a trade, what I would recommend is that if you have not already done it, add your stop loss to take profit to your trades that will unlock a lot of different features and under advanced trade data, the OTP hit. That's very important. OTP hit, when you hover over, it asks you, did the price hit your target before it hit your stop loss? And this is 100% independent of where you actually exit the trade. So the only question is, you take the trade and you have your take profit and your stop loss and you're looking at the, the price behavior. If the price hit the profit before it hit the stop loss, you take it yes. If the price hit the stop loss first, you would take it no. That's it already here for this. And that will unlock a few very important features in Edgewonk. One, under chart lab, we go scroll down and here's the trade management. And Edgewonk analyzes your effectiveness of your trade management. And what we have is your actual trading performance. And this is measured in our multiple. And what this tells you is how many R multiples have you realized as a performance metric. And then very interesting is we can compare to your potential performance. And the potential performance is a complete passive so-called set and forget approach. So you take your entry, you place your stop loss, you place your target and you theoretically do not engage in any trade management behavior. You don't move your stop loss, you don't move your take profit, and you don't manually interfere with your trades. And that way, it's very interesting to compare. In this case, the potential performance is higher than the actual performance. So this means that the trader made some trading decisions that is costing him a lot of money, essentially, because he could have made more money by just let his trades run its course and not interfere with it. So that is then a very important finding because it tells you that your trade management is a little bit off and you can dig into that and see what is your common problem. You could then again go back to your entry exit on trade management comments to see where are you going wrong and what is the problem here. But what we are seeing is that after you have mastered to some degree the tilt meter challenge and if you can stop breaking your rules at least on some of the trades probably not all of the trades initially the next big problem is that traders mismanage their trades so that's why we put it here at the second step and what ties in here is what we could recommend is the trading plans so in edgewonk you can pre-plan your trades and this will help you also to get a higher awareness so maybe you do your analysis on the weekends, maybe in the morning, and you could add a trading plan. So whatever pops up on your radar, what you think you could trade, you could type it already in here, the instrument, the setup or the strategy. You say, okay, is this gonna be a buy or a sell trade? You can type in theoretical entry prices. So where are you gonna enter or roughly gonna enter? This is not obviously gonna be totally exact, but you could have a rough entry price and then you can save the trade. And now it is set here. And this helps you already improve your process on the next step, on the next level, because that will bring a little bit more awareness. What we have seen also, it helps reduce the amount of impulsive trades, trades that are not in your trading plan, trades that you shouldn't probably take. And then afterwards, what you can do is you can transfer to your journal. When this trade becomes a real trade, then you just click here. It will be moved to your journal. And then in your journal, you can then complement and complete the entries. When was the trade exited? What is the profit, the exit price? And then also complement the entry exit and trade management comments. So the trading plans and the trade management are a very good feature here at the second stage. 
Another thing that is really helpful and what is often recommended at this stage is looking for outliers. Very often traders can hold it together for an extended period of time and they trade quite disciplined for maybe a week, maybe a month, maybe two months. But then this one trade comes around where you are just losing it somehow, you make repeated trading mistakes, you let this loss get out of hand and suddenly you are sitting on a much bigger loss than what you've anticipated. And it's not uncommon to see that traders often lose all of the profits that they have made in a week just with one trade. And what we can do is look for outliers in our trade analytics. And this is basically a very advanced way of breaking down and analyzing your trading in step by step and very in depth. So what we can do is add different um, ordering right here. For example, we could say, okay, we want to analyze our different setups and or strategies, whatever you want to call it. And then here you get a breakdown, the different setups that you have taken, moving average bounds, pullback, retest, and then you could look for, for example, here, expectancy. You only have one trade that is tagged moving average bounds, but this has a, such a negative high expectancy. And it seems like you lost so much money that it completely erased all of the 20 trades that you made a profit here on the pullback. So that is something that needs to be addressed. And you can then look around in your journal. Maybe you could look for the direction. Some traders are better at looking for long trades with the short trades, and you can look for that. In this case, no problem here. Another thing that you can do is if you have used your comments in Edgewonk, maybe your exit comments, you can look at them and see how are they impacting your trading performance. And then you can look for outliers here. When you look for outliers, I would recommend to look for expectancy, which is the per trade value, or also the sum of the gain. And those can help you understand where are outliers. And then the next step is that you dig into it. But also this first step of bringing awareness and really understanding what is actually causing you is such a big advancement in your trading that many traders will never realize. Many traders never will spend even this little amount of time in their journal or revisiting old trades that they are not aware of. There's actually this one thing that if I could stop this, it would completely turn around my complete trading performance. And we have seen it many times that one, two, three small changes can make the difference between a losing trader, a break-even trader, and a profitable trader. The line is often not that deep and very often, and you will often see those low-hanging fruits that will make a big improvement in your trading. So this is it for lesson number two, and I would hope that you take me up on the offer, on the challenge, keep journaling, and then I will see you in lesson three.